Welcome to our channel Sankalp Study Success. Now in this video, let us see the continuation of types of Turing machine in our 5th unit. So there are so few more topics in the 5th unit where let us discuss each and every one in detail. Now coming to the first one, we are having two different types of classes here. The first one is the decidable one and the second one is the undecidable one. Now let us see what is decidable where it halts and goes to the final state that means any your Turing machine if it halts and goes to the final state or the non-final state that means it may be a final state or it may be a non-final state but the ultimate goal is it should halt either to the final or to the non-final then that Turing machine is known as decidable coming to undecidable any Turing machine which doesn't halt and input string is not accepted it is not at all halting first of all then how will our input string is going to accept so it is not at all halting if it is not halting then it is undecidable which is the example is recursively enumerable languages for the decidable you are having the example is recursive languages there is a difference between recursive languages and recursively enumerable languages where this recursive languages are decidable and this recursively enumerable languages are undecidable. So these are the two classes which we have. Now let us see the recursively la recursive languages. What are recursive languages? Here these recursive languages are always decidable which we have seen just now and a language L is recursive and a language L is said to be recursive if L of M for some Turing machine M such that if W is in L then M accepts. That means if your string is in L then M accepts. If it is not in L then M eventually halts although it never enters an accepting state. It may accept or it may not accept but it halts. If your input string is not in not in the given language that means it will halt but it may not be the final state that means it is not accepted obviously if your any input string is accepted only if it is reaching to the final state correct so now your if your w is in l that means if your input is in l then the turing machine accepts that's fine if it is not in l then your turing machine halts somewhere but that will not be your final state that means your input string is rejected but the thing is here the input string should halt then only you are going to say that it is a recursive languages and it is a decidable one now if you see here this rectangle represents it is a not recursively enumerable languages that means all the other languages coming to the sec this first circle it is recursively enumerable but it is not recursive that means it is not decidable it is undecidable and here it is recursive that means it is decidable so now if you carefully observe recursive languages are decidable that is very that is crystal clear over here right but here recursively enumerable are not recursive see this decidable is a subset of this one correct that means what you are recursively enumerable some may be decidable some may not be decidable so that means few are decidable and few are undecidable this is about this diagram and the recursive languages now let us see some of the properties of recursive languages here where if l is a recursive language so l so is l if string is accepted by l then it is not accepted by l bar that means the complement of this language it is not accepted by the complement of this language if any string it is accepted by l then it is rejected by l bar now if both l and l bar are recursive enumerable then L is recursive okay so if both languages L and L bar are recursively enumerable languages then your L is a recursive language now union of two recursive languages is again recursive that means it is closed under union and union of two recursively enumerable languages is recursively enumerable that means recursively enumerable languages and recursive languages both are closed under union property so these are few properties of recursive languages now 
coming to the undecidable problems about turing machine you are having a small topic which is undecidable problems about turing machine here this is nothing but a reduction this is nothing but reduction and this is your instance p1 and this is your instance p2 now if you see if we have an algorithm to convert instance of p1 to the instance of p2 that means you are converting this instance of p1 to instance of p2 with the help of an algorithm that have the same answer then we say that p1 reduces p2 that means even if you are calculating with respect to p1 or if you are calculating with respect to p2 then if both are equal that means if both are same then you can say that it is reduction so p1 if it is converting into p2 still you are getting the same answer which is nothing but p1 is reducing p2 that's it now a reduction from p1 to p2 is a turing machine that takes an instance of p1 return on its tape and it holds with an instance of p2 on its state that means what this is starting from here and it holds over p2 correct so if it starts from p2 then it holds over p1 here if there is a reduction from p1 to p2 p1 is undecidable then so is p1 correct if p1 is undecidable then it comes again to the p1 if p2 is undecidable that means if p2 is non recursive enumerable then again so is p2 so this is about the reduction and undecidable problems about turing machine now coming to the rice theorem which is the very easiest theorem and it is a very simplest theorem which is every non trivial property of a recursively enumerable language it is undecidable that means what any non trivial property of recursively enumerable language is is undecidable if you see this recursively enumerable language is some may be decidable some may be undecidable correct which we have seen using that diagram so for every non trivial property of this recursively enumerable language it is undecidable coming to the post correspondence problem this is another topic which you have which is a small topic but you are going to have some you can also expect some of the problems related to post correspondence problem in your 2 or 3 marks question where now let us see what is the post post correspondence problem and also solve one of the problem related to this post correspondence problem which is also you can say that it is pcp which is the post correspondence problem and here if you are having some sequence of integers i1 i2 i3 and so on up to im so the instance of post correspondence problem it has a solution your post correspondence problem is having a solution if this sequence of integers when interrupted as indexes first strings these are taken as the indexes first strings that means w i1 i2 and so on and for this x i1 x i2 that means there are two different list of strings which is the first list is of w list let us consider and the second list is of x list so if you are taking x1 x2 x3 and so on and w1 w2 w3 the sequence of these two are same that means you are getting the same strings if you combine then that then you can say that you are having a solution to the post, post correspondence problem otherwise you can say that there is no solution for the post correspondence problem let us solve a problem then it will be very clear here it is given an instance of pcp that means a post correspondence problem then you need to specify whether this instance is having a solution or not there are two list over here let us consider it as list a and let us consider this as list b so this i values 1 to 3 that means this is x1 x2 and x3 right this is w i means it is w1 w3 and w3 there are two list over here now if you combine the combination of both the list then you should get then you should get both the combinations should be equal if it is equal then that means you are having a solution otherwise you don't so now let me consider if let me consider x1 x2 and x3 let us combine what is x1 is 110 x2 is 0011 and x3 is 0110 now let me go with w3 w2 and w1 that means 110 
this is double zero and this is double one zero double one zero if you observe these both are one and the same correct you are getting the same strings so you can say that x1 x2 x3 which is equals to w3 w2 and w1 that means you are having a solution to post correspondence problem correct that means if you are having the combinations and if you are those combinations of the strings are equal then you can say there is a solution for this if it is not equal then you can say that there is no solution for the post correspondence problem and you may have multiple solutions also sometimes now because if you see here if i combine x2 x3 and x1 here i am going to get x2 is double zero double one x3 is zero double one zero and x1 is double one zero Now if I take W2, W3 and W1 which is So if you observe these both are one and the same So that means what X2, X3, X1 which is equals to W2, W3 and W1 So that means if you are having a solution that if the list A combination is equals to the list B combination. That means if you are having both the same strings, then it is the solution for the PCP problem. Otherwise, if you don't have the combinations are equal, then you can say that you are not having a solution for the PCP problem. Now, this is about the post correspondence problem. Now, you are having again a modified post correspondence problem. Now, what is the modified post correspondence problem is which is again the same post correspondence problem. That means the combination of your one list that string should be equal to the string of combination of the second list. But only thing is you are having an extra pair x comma y. You are having an extra pair x comma y. This is appended at the beginning. Okay. This is appended at the beginning of the string. So, this modified post correspondence problem is again same as post correspondence problem we need to write if this modified post correspondence problem is asked then you are going to write the complete post correspondence problem and with an one more point where you are having you are going to have an extra pair x comma y which is appended at the beginning of the string this is nothing but a modified post correspondence problem which is same as post correspondence problem this is one of the smallest topic and coming to the last topic of your fifth unit which is the universal turing machine this universal turing machine it is mainly used to accept universal languages it accepts universal languages so this universal Turing machine that means accepts universal languages means all the kind of languages are accepted by universal Turing machines and the main thing is it is a multi stack multi tape Turing machine it is multi tape Turing machine that means you are going to have a finite control over here and let us take the multi tape right that means you are going to have multiple tapes where multiple tape is again infinite to both the ends correct so let us take one more tape and here let us take the third tape here and all the three tapes are infinite at both the ends because it is a multi tape turing machine and this should be pointing to any one of the alphabet of the input tape correct so, which is nothing but a multi tape Turing machine here this is the input tape which is having which consists of input string correct all the symbols of the input string are accepted over here and here you are going to have zero state and one state here let us one zero one zero or zero zero one one and so on that means you are going to have zero state and one state state is nothing but it represents in terms of zero and one so state this represents in terms of zero and one in terms of zero and one so this is about universal turing machine first of all it accepts all the 
universal languages and it is a multi tape turing machine where you are going to have multiple tapes and a finite control where it is pointing to each and every one of the input symbol of the input tapes which you have so here the state represents the it represents in terms of 0 or 1 it represents a input of 0 and 1 and the input tape is nothing but which consists of input strings so this is about universal turing machine so this completes our fifth unit which are having only small small topics and it is a theoretical unit where the questions may be theoretical so thank you for watching the video